Well, a corporate advisor to super fund giants is pushing investors against the re-election of one of the country's most high-profile high business leaders to the board of retailer Harvey Norman. Now, what's worse, they want to replace her, and the her is Katie Page, with a shareholder activist who's run for board positions on major Australian companies 49 times and failed every time. The proxy company called Ownership Matters is pushing for Stephen Main to replace Page despite him having no corporate experience in retail, indeed corporate board experience at all. Well, joining me now for more is journalist and columnist for The Australian, Janet Albrookson, who broke this story today. Janet, you didn't miss today. You call it a woke joke, but it's worse than that, isn't it? Yes, it is, Peter. Um, you know, this is part of a broader picture, a you know, broader and deeper problem with corporate Australia, where you've got a bunch of activists who are using companies as Trojan horses to push their social agendas. And that is not in the interests of shareholders. It's not in the interests of innovation. You know, companies should be free, ha have enough latitude to try out different uh, models of corporate governance to see what works. And that's what people like Jerry Harvey have said. It's what people like David Murray have said. It's what people like Chris Corrigan have said, that there has to be greater competition in how country, uh, companies are run. And yet we have these... I mean, they're basically corporate governance gods who have set down some commandments on what a board should look like uh, with, with a million rules around it. And if you don't adhere to that, if you put your head above the parapet and say, I disagree with that, I want to run my company in a different way, which is what Jerry Harvey has done, uh, watch out. And this is why you've got this advisory firm, a proxy firm, I think, coming out and coming after Harvey Norman. And I have to keep saying it out loud, Peter, they are coming after Harvey Norman to vote against the re-election of the most experienced person on that board and in the place of Katie Page, put on someone who's never sat on a serious board, if any board. Um, he doesn't have any retail experience. He has no property uh, experience, which is what Harvey Norman does. And they are putting mm -hmm. that in a report. And remember who they're advising. Ownership Matters is a proxy firm that is advising the biggest superannuation funds in this country hold, who hold our money, million, hundreds of millions of dollars of ordinary Australians, our retirement savings. They are playing with that because they've decided that Katie Page should not be on the board of Harvey Norman. I have to keep saying it out loud just to remember this is not an April Fool's joke. Well, you know, it's not. And, of course, the clear legal requirement in corporations' law is for board members to act in the best interests of the shareholders. And one of the best tests for how much they act in the best interests of shareholders is how well the share price does. And uh, you nailed it today when you said the shares in Harvey Norman over the last 12 months have gained more than 32%. Now, that's outperforming everybody else on the benchmark S&P ASX 200. Um, almost two to one over the same period of time. So on every measure, um, she should be there. She should stand, she should stay. Now, these guys say they're all about diversity. How is this uh, guy with no experience, a 49-time loser, replacing someone who's such a standout? Well, it does tell you that the silver lining, as I wrote in this whole dreadful saga, is that it's completely blown the diversity agenda out of the water. Because if diversity now means getting rid of the most experienced person on the board, and in her place, putting a man who has zero experience to be on the board of Harvey Norman. If that's diversity, I tell you, diversity has now lost any kind of credibility. Uh, I think, you know, Ownership Matters is losing credibility by putting forward this, this position. It's one thing for Stephen Mayne, of course, to turn up at AGMs. That's what the man loves to do. He loves to get a headline. He loves to ask a question. He loves to put himself forward, as you said, 49 times. That's one thing. You know, I can kind of cope with that. The fact that a serious advisory firm has put its name to getting rid of Katie Page and putting Stephen Mayne on the board, I think that takes you know, the, uh, the level of absurdity in terms of what's happening in, in, in corporate Australia to another level. And I think if, if we don't call this stuff out, it's only going to get worse. And we should be, you know, we are so lucky that we have just a handful, it's barely a handful of business leaders in Australia who refuse to tick boxes, who won't be told uh, what they need to do um, in terms of board structure. They are focused on returns for shareholders. I don't know about you, Peter, but the last time I went to David Jones, I couldn't find what I needed, and when I finally settled on something else, I couldn't find someone to take my money, right? So in terms of retail, 
Harvey Norman, you know, understands re the people running Harvey Norman, Katie Page, Jerry Harvey, that board, the managers, they understand retail more than anyone in this country. So it just makes an absolute mockery, I think. It's an insult to shareholders to have a serious firm advising uh, funds holding our money that Katie Page should be knocked off the board. That is an insult, not just to common sense, but to shareholders. But it's also payback, as you're saying, because they won't tow the line of the zeitgeist. And this is, yes, a signal to Katie Page, it's a signal to Jerry Harvey. Now, they've got stiff spines. I bet they'll say, bugger off, we'll be uh, who we are and have we always been. And, and let's remind people, they have skin in the game. They own themselves a large proportion of that stock. But what about all the other corporates who are sitting on the fence wondering whether or not they have to wade into the latest fight or push from the left? They'll now feel compelled... Uh, lest this sort of uh, activist proxy mob go after them. You're absolutely right, because this is, about, uh, this is about shutting down anyone who dares to dissent from, as I said, the commandments laid down by the corporate governance gods. Jerry Harvey put his head up and said, I'm not going to be ticking boxes. I'm not going to be... I don't care about, you know, agendas, gender diversity agendas. I'm going to run my company to make profits for shareholders and I won't be told what to do. Right, so they are coming after Jerry Harvey. Um, the way to do that is to come after Katie Page, who is up for re-election. Uh, and even Stephen Mayne said he admires her that she's actually putting herself up for re-election, right, it and, is. and that she should stay on the board. So this this is the level of absurdity. But it's about making sure that other others who are thinking about you know questioning this whole corporate governance agenda, uh, you know, that they don't do the same because you know what happens when some people dissent it grows. Um, but we have to encourage it because for the sake of corporate Australia, for the sake of shareholders, you know, past generations have drawn on company profits for retirement savings. Increasingly, that will not be the case because more and more people are putting their money into private equity. They don't want to be told what to do with all of these corporate governance rules. I mean, the great irony here, Peter, remember, is that the push by ownership matters to get rid of Katie Page is apparently done in the name of getting more independent directors on the Harvey Norman board. Um, um, and yet their clients, the super funds, fought bitterly to the death to make sure that they did not come under laws that required them to have a certain percentage of independent directors on their boards. So the hypocrisy of this a whole absolutely. episode is, is, just, is just breathtaking. But doesn't this just show, and I talked about the march for the institutions and we see where the left is everywhere, but this is about a very strategic decision made by the Labor Party now almost 40 years ago uh, to move into formalised superannuation, to use it as a beachhead in corporate Australia. At the same time, we've got declining um, membership of union funds, uh, sorry, of, of unions in uh, private business. It's down now below 14%. Unions knew that was humming, coming, they knew they would lose their fees, they knew that they would lose their influence. So using the weight of, of the savings of ordinary people to now threaten and bully corporate Australia is the new, is the new way. It, that is absolutely right, Peter. Um, um, the Labor Party, Paul Keating, knew that union membership would wane, that aspirational Australians, Australians would increasingly not join unions, but aspirational Stra Australians would be earning money and needing to put it away under compulsory superannuation laws, and that they would be uh, put into, de many of them are default industry funds. Right? So, you know, we had, we've had to have a fight even to get a real choice around where people are able to put their superannuation uh, money. Um, and, and so what you've got is this, the, the biggest financial force in this country are now the industry super funds. And, and they are throwing, the people who run them are throwing their weight around. They don't like the same kind of rules applying to them that apply to corporate Australia. And they're relying on proxy firms like Ownership Matters to run agendas that suit their broader campaign to bring about any kind of social change that takes their fancy, whether it's quotas on boards, whether it's you know, however you want to define uh, diversity. But what it's doing is undermining the profitability of Australian companies. I don't know about you, Peter, but, you know, it strikes me that the women who need quotas most, uh, the women who are most in favour of quotas are those who need them most. So, you know, next time you look yeah, at a well, board with, with, with man mandated quotas, have a look at the women on there. You could not have said that better. Janet Albrechtson, as always, thanks for your time and thank you for exposing this today. Thank you.